everybody. Um, as Noam said, um, we'll talk about um, geographical data. Um, actually, what kind of data are we are we talking about? What are, we are talking about coordinates, uh, be it uh, GPS coordinate at, as latitude and longitude, or okay. Um, uh, be it uh, latitude longitude coordinates or Cartesian coordinates uh, for indoor ma mapping like X and Y in meters. But also um, metadata like, like time, um, who is the owner of this position, where is he heading, in, in what direction, what speed, etc. Just an example of data we can have we can have like a location, here is latitude and longitude, on altitude in meters, a body temperature on the name, for example. Um, when I say real time, it's not like hard real time, like what you can have in hardware. You, we could have it, but, but we will have something that is enough for you, um, which is, in our case, one second is okay for us. Uh, in Python, when we are speaking about uh, handling a lot of data quite fast, we now think about AsyncIO. We could use uh, G-Events and other solutions. Python 3, we are going no for AsyncIO, but feel free to use whatever you want. Actually. So we will receive the data using AsyncIO uh, from diverse sources, uh, be it in, a in MQTT, or they or zero MQ, um, getting on HTTP API, or having a socket open to receive binary data from GPS trackers, for example, in cars or things like that. And we will normalize this data. Uh, we will store it uh, using MongoDB, actually. We'll use standard tools to display it like open layers. And if we are indoor, we will display a map with this data. And uh, if we need to make calculations, for example, is the person in one room, um, we will have to account for error margins. We will make what we call buffer around our rooms uh, in meters. For that, we will have to change our um, coordinates from, from GPS coordinates to a Cartesian coordinates on a, on a 2D plan in meters. So, um, to store your data, uh, we will use MongoDB, as I said. We will have one document per location received, and we will have uh, parents, which are, for example, the people uh, who are mapped, or the vehicle, or whatever. And when we receive the data, we will update their last location. Uh, if we want to store rides like, okay, uh, this vehicle started at this hour, has gone that far, and stopped at that time, we will create and update ride documents, if it's applicable. Um, if we need streaming, uh, MongoDB has something that is really useful, which is kept collection. It's like a database, but you will have a max size for this database, let's say 100 megabytes, and uh, whatever goes um, goes up to 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 this limit will be discarded. It's like uh, FIFO, first in, first out of the da database. What is really good is that we can just like do uh, four position in in my position query and just send it to the client. Uh, on, on, on if we are using the good async li li libraries, just like uh, slip between the, the data. And we will also use a, a really useful feature of MongoDB, which is the, the 2D sphere indexes, which will permit us to, to make queries on, on our features. So let's have a look at a very, very simple example application. We'll have a client that sends random positions, a server that stores our incoming data, 
and a web server with an API to be able to have a web interface. So let's send data to this server. We will have our, our AsyncIO protocol here. Uh, once we connect, we will just generate a random message here, which will be in our bounds. Um, choose one of our tags and just put it at random on our map. So it's really simple. We just fuzz the entry of data to simulate a device really sending this. So, so we connect here to our localhost on this port. So it's just TCP socket. Really, really simple. Now our server, that's what, where the, the, the real deal begins. Um, we will import AsyncIO, obviously, daytime, JSON, to be able to parse our, our inbound data. Uh, we'll use PyMongo. Uh, this is the synchronous version of the Mongo library uh, for, for, uh, to, to, be, to be simpler for this talk. In a real world, you will want to use Motor, which is the, the AsyncIO version of PyMongo. So we will connect to our MongoDB dat database and create a client on the database geolocation. We'll init our database by dropping everything for the first run. It's a demo, actually. We'll create our tags that we were re referencing before. Um, we will, like before, um, creating a server and um, on on here, insert position once we receive new data on this socket. Inserting position is here quite simple. Um, we have our client, we set a date, which is no. We insert a position with the data we received, that the, that's the position uh, document database. We find the client uh, for this received data, and we update it to set the current um, the current date on last modified. This is a feature of MongoDB, and, and we set the last location to the location we received. And then we said, okay, we we inserted the data in the database. Um, here is the type of data we are we are storing. Which is um, which is actually a GeoJSON. Uh, if people know what it is, it's uh, standard to store uh, geographical data, and uh, we will just store a point with coordinates here. That's this part here where where where, where we insert the data. Uh, while the data arrives, here it's not seen completely, but um, you can check on what features uh, your point is with the buffer thing I was explaining be 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 before. We can do geo-intersect, which is like, OK, where is this point? What does this feature intersect with? You can take a circle on your room and say, OK, where is my circle? Uh, uh, with, what with which room that does it intersect? Uh, we can check for authorized or pro prohibited zones. For example, one person doesn't have the right to be there. We can raise a warning. Uh, we can also do reverse geocoding, like find the address of a specific point. For example, a vehicle just, just stopped there. What is its address? And we can also check for proximity between, between tags, which, which are like the devices we are tracking. So um, when we are talking about indoor positioning, we will have a map. Our map will be defined as a GeoJSON feature collection, uh, which, will, which is here. So here we have one feature, for example, which is room B211. This is its geometry. It goes on and on. Um, to load our GeoJSON map, we'll use uh, Fiona, which is a really great library to load GeoJSON. 
and uh, we will get a geo collection opening our GeoJSON file. Each element of, th of this geo collection is a dictionary with a geometry, which is what I was saying before, uh, properties. It's a room on level one with altitude 37.5 meters. Its name is B211. Properties are what you define. It's completely uh, um, arbitrary. So let's create our collection with our rooms. So for room in GeoCollection, db.features, which is just a, the, the equivalent of a table on MongoDB, insert one, our room. We'll create a, a geosphere index, which was what I was saying before. Uh, we will create an index on, 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 the, on the geometry field. Let's search, for example, we received a point we, which was these coordinates, and we want to know in which room it belongs. So we will iterate and print it. So it's, uh, so it's, um, it's a feature of type room and of name B211. Now, if we iterate on all the clients that sends us their position right now, we, we want to know where they are. So, so we iterate on clients and, and we do the same check and here we have uh, tag 4 is in room B208. Tag 2 is in room Liberté. Tag 3 is in stairs with no name. Tag 1 is just in no room at all. We don't know where it is. It's maybe outside the building, whatever. So uh, to be able to see the data for a client, we will have to set up a simple web server with, with, with really simple APIs. So our APIs are our slash features to return our map. So, so your JavaScript map mapping library can, can display your map, a slash clients which will return all the clients on our static file to, to send our JavaScript uh, app. We send all the GeoJSON features, so it's uh, Type feature collection features item for for item in our geo collection that we loaded before. Uh, slash clients sends a list of clients on their last position. We just iterate to it on, on make on an object with all our our clients and we return it. This is an example. We have clients and all our clients with their last location, last modified, etc. The web client can use the, the last modified field to know it, if he has to move the, the point or not. So here is the complete code for our web app, which is quite simple. And um, let's see if I can show you a live demo. Here we have our points, which are moving randomly, just like we saw before, because we are just sending data each half a second, we are sending a new point. So um, the map you see here is our GeoJSON feature collection. Um, since we are in latitude longitude coordinates, we are on the map here. Uh, this is actually in the middle of Paris. And uh, here are our, our features, which are moving in the square we defined before. Um, actually, um, this is a very simple system with indoor positioning. Uh, I have a system in production for some clients that I can show you to. So, if you make your data right, you can have nice da dashboard seeing how much uh, assets are moving, how, how much assets are, are online, etc. Um, and actually, we can go to see on the map and know in real time how, uh, where are our vehicles. We have, we have one here, which is stopped, the red color. 
two that are offline that are here and one that is moving that is here. Actually, we can go to see the one that is moved, uh, load the ride, which is the right document I was speaking about. If the network works, we should be able to load it. I hope it will work. And um, um, actually, it's quite nice to be able to receive in real time all our position um, and also have an history on our position. Uh, so, this vehicle did all these routes in the last 24 hours. Um, if we go here, Uh, we can see here a speed track. Uh, yeah, we can see that at this exact time, the speed he was go, 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 going at 43 kilometers per hour at this position exactly. And we can see the, the starting point and the end point of each uh, ride. Um, do we have enough time? Um, yes. Okay. Actually, um, I can show you the the JavaScript part of my very simple example we were seeing before. Um, um, new apps like the one you are seeing behind are made with React.js and all that for the client part. This one is really simple using MooTools on just OpenLayer 3, which, which is our mapping library. And we have just a style function setting how we want our markers to be seen, which is our marker icon, and, and our text, which was our feature name, the tag1, tag2, tag3. And um, we create our map, we put our rooms. Since we use GeoJSON, we, we are just mapping an open layers vector to our slash features uh, URL that I was, uh, that we were seeing before. And, and we just load our feature collection on the map uh, to, to have the room displayed here. And uh, we zoom to the extent of our our rooms. We, we we just zoom on our buildings, and then we make a periodical request on slash clients uh, to be able to move to, to move the points. So that's actually the the very simple JavaScript part of the sample application. So let's go back. So to go further, we could we could use uh, Pi, um, we, we we could use the, uh, zero MQ or MQTT, we, which are messaging protocol to be able to send or retrieve data. Uh, in our example, we could use Motor to have asynchronous MongoDB, and we could use WebSockets for for client-server communication to be able to 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 only send data when they arrive using our work capped collection and, and not send all the position all the time in our API. And, uh, and to make the calculation to know if we are in a room or not, ideally we would be using PyProsh to make coordinates uh, transformation because um, latitude longitude is not, uh, is not a scalar plane and, um, and actually um, the map would look a bit squeezed uh, if you look at it in latitude longitude as, as x and y instead of meters. So this presentation on all the linked code is on a repository which is at, at this address. Uh, I am Jonathan Chemoul. You can find me on Twitter on John, John 10112 and I did a quite similar presentation with Thomas Chirou in 2015 at Pike and France, so thanks to If you have questions. 
Yes. Mm, question was if I generated the data. The route data. Yes. How, how did you generate the routes on the map between the coordinate points? Ah, okay. Uh, here in our example map, uh, we, 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 we were ge ge generating raw data uh, inside those bounds. It's here. We used random.uniform on our bounds in this, uh, in this sample app. Ah, okay. Okay, okay. Yes, 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 the, the road. Um, in, in, in the app, I've shown you that <laughs> there was this road. Um, actually, um, we store uh, each point separately um, as, a, as a separate document. So we would add an API point uh, like slash history in which you give um, a tag name, a start date, and an end date, and you just send all the points. Or you could also uh, compress uh, all those points as a root. Um, there are algorithms uh, to be able to compress a route, uh, which are used, for example, in Google Maps. And of course, if you if you create and update a write documents, um, you store the route inside the write document. The question was, uh, how do you get the indoor coordinates? Um, actually, there is quite a lot of ways to do it. Um, there is a ultra wideband system to be able to locate uh, devices. Uh, you can put uh, Bluetooth beacons around the, around the building and have people have their phone uh, calculate the distance between the Bluetooth beacons. Or you can do the other way around and have people wearing Bluetooth beacons and, and have boxes uh, doing trilateration on the signal strengths of those Bluetooth beacons. Uh, the last solution is what we implemented at the client, actually. So. Thank you very much.